Good morning, everybody out there in the world of higher education. Um, I don't doubt that, uh, like myself, you're uh, galvanizing yourself for uh, uh, semester two, which no doubt you've been doing for some time over the Christmas break. Um, I know that I'm busy um, as an associate lecturer with a bit it's a part-time role. I'm just helping out the people who really know what they're doing, uh, putting the polishing touches to some of the modules we'll be delivering. I'm currently doing, just out of interest, one on um, uh, marketing analytics, which is keeping me on my toes and keeping me current and fresh in that context. And uh, another one I'm doing is specifically around digital marketing strategy and how you put a business case together to get the right levels of investment into the people, process, and technology. Technologies um, required to deliver um, against uh, a digital strategy. So that's quite cool because that's really what today is about in many respects. Um, so getting straight on to this, um, let's just talk about moving on to the next slide here. So the next slide. So what are we going to be covering here today? I'm hoping that we can get this uh, um, covered in about 45, 50 minutes. But please, as Tim has indicated to you already, feel free to ask questions in the um, uh, the, the, the discussion panel within the WebEx uh, uh, system there, and we can ask, answer questions as we go through if we have time to do so. We can also answer questions at the end of the webinar, and of course, if you've got any detailed questions and you would like to follow up with us, um, we can do that offline at some time in the very near future, and indeed, I hope that you do. So, uh, what we are covering today is I'm going to give you a case study um, as to how one university we've been working with in Canada has been using uh, digital marketing and communications to great effect to uh, recruit international students. Um, more about that in a moment. And then really talking about how they've used simple things like personalization and automated digital marketing systems um, to be able to deliver against what they're trying to do in terms of trying to attract international students. And then we've got this offer of a quick wins workshop and a follow-up um, webinar, which I think is going to be really sexy because what it's got is um, an actual demonstration, we're hoping, of um, some technology that's based on Sitecore that shows you how you actually do this in practice. Um, so uh, let's, let's move on with this, shall we? Let's just move on to the next thing. So I'd like to give you an example briefly of an organization that we've been working with the last I think the journey has been taking us about three years. Um, the the Rotten School of um, or Rotman School of, of Management in the University of Toronto. And for those who uh, are uninitiated as to who they are, they are one of the, the top leading uh, business schools in the world, arguably at least. That's their claim. A recent survey by the Financial Times has um, kind of validated that worldwide in terms of their position in the market. And they're certainly, um, undisputedly, the, the top business school in, in Canada. So um, they're doing some good things and doing some right things, but indeed, that's not to say they don't have the, the same challenges as you people that are listening to this webinar this morning. So what is it they're doing? Well, you might think that, um, given what I've just said, that they may be a massive, um, big university with lots of funding, with unlimited amount of money to do all the things that I'm going to talk you through that they are doing. But the reality is they've just got two people in digital marketing. Um, and the great news today is that um, when it comes to doing the things I'm going to talk you through in a moment is that you don't need to employ a lot of specialist staff to do this. Um, you don't need to, it's not going to be all absorbing and consuming in terms of the things that you have to do. Because what we're trying to do is deploy the, these technologies today that really help to automate um, the, the, the processes um, and the, and the uh, techniques that are employed to actually attract international students and do other things as well. So these things are now technically feasible um, and financially viable without having to recruit lots of people and for it to really impact your time. They're there to make your life easier than it was previously and to be able to do a lot more than perhaps you've done before in the past. So some of the things that they've done in a very basic way at Roman are around using Analytics, it all starts with analytics and um, finishes with analytics. That will be part of my lecture I deliver um, in, the, in February coming up. Um, and then what they did was to, to simply map out some, some user journeys of, of the students they wanted to track from specific countries. Um, and maybe you're already doing this. I should imagine a lot of your universities are already starting to think about your personas, the people you want to attract, what courses and why, and how you can and serve up relevant contextual information related to them, and then map out a, a user journey, a hypothetical but probably realistic based upon the analytics, as to what that journey might entail. And then personalizing content as, as students go through that journey to make sure you're serving up 
contextual information at the right time, the right place, on the right device, based upon their explicit and implicit um, behaviors and content, and then doing a little bit of testing, you know, in a couple of forms, just to see which one works better than the other, and that's quite insightful. Um, and then getting some consistency, being able to create content once and publish it everywhere across all these different channels to get an omni-channel experience. That's uh, in the bricks and mortar world as well as the um, uh, um, a digital world. So let's get into this. So what they wanted to do was to start with, as you should always do, is to go back to your analytics. Um, and if you're using Google Analytics, clearly within there, there are some basic information you've got already. You can see where people are coming from and what they're looking at and what goals they're triggering if you set goals within your Google Analytics system, which I'm sincerely hoping that you have done. I'm sure that you maybe have done that already because that gives you the attribution to some extent, albeit a goal is, is something that somebody downloading something as opposed to actually signing up for something. But nevertheless, um, they're there and they're uh, to be used within within Google. And indeed, Sitecore has got some more sophisticated analytics that does this out of the box. Um, so what they were trying to do was to look at the behavior of the visitors that were coming to the, to the website and to then determine and to their other digital properties, I have to, have to say, and then to determine what content they're looking for at what point and stage in their journey. And this is not rocket science, I have to say, um, but the outcomes are quite dramatic in terms of the achievements they've been able to um, realize in terms of um, acquisition of new international students. Not only more of them, but the right level of students, the ones that really can speak English as required, and etc., and the ones with the high, who are high achievers. Um, and what they realized from their analytics was that um, most of the people, when they came online, um, were looking for how much does it cost. So that's the case. If that's what they're looking for, then rather than get them to go through a whole series of clicks and, and find out all, uh, and struggle to find the information they want, what they were able to do was to personalize the content um, to give them the information about how much does it cost, you know, so you get that immediate engagement because what we try to do is to is to get their attention. Attention is now a commodity that we all have to earn, and um, and to earn it, you've got to be able to get that attention within the moment. You don't have a chance to um, get their attention five minutes into this. Uh, so this is what really makes a fundamental difference. It sounds some simple, but it really does work. So. From the analytics, they could see that people were primarily looking at information about can they afford it. So that's what you do. You give them that information from the outset. The second thing was was really about um, personalization based upon these visits. Um, the, the second main trend of visitors coming from all over the world were primarily why should I join Roman University? So you know, can I afford it? So if I can afford it, why should I join Roman? So what they would do is that when people come back or they're clicking on information that looks as though they're trying to ascertain the reasons why they should join information, uh, join Roman, they get served up content which is pertinent to that implied behavior that they're expressing in the moment on their digital properties. And so what they do is to serve up very simple a banner here that says, hey, so you, you clicked on why should we join. And immediately, the second click through would be, here's some testimonials, here's our credentials and capabilities, and as you can see, they're quite impressive from this organization. So then what that happens? What's the next thing that they're interested in finding out? Well, again, it was about, well, who will I learn from? So, you know, can I afford it? Uh, why should I join the university? Um, but also, will I get some great tutoring from people like myself? <laughs> Um, probably not, but they need to know the credentials of the professors and the uh, lecturers and their, their credentials. And so that's the next thing they, they wanted to find out. So again, immediately, you know, when they come back, because we know what they've been looking at before, that they've previously been looking at costs or uh, why they should join the university, then the next thing they're likely to want to know is, hey, who am I going to get tutored by? And am I going to have really great informative, you know, set me on fire lectures by these great um, um, academics and the answer has to be, um, yeah, serve them, up, serve them up then again immediately straight away as they come onto the site because the site remembers who they are and what, or what they're looking at now, implied or explicit um, personalization. The system can do that really easily. So then you give them that information. So automatically um, you're able to, um, what you're able to is to 
to get their attention and their engagement, and you're giving them a great experience. Also, uh, the subliminal pictures, I have to say, that they're serving up are pertinent to the audiences that they're trying to attract. A little bit more about that in a moment. And then the last thing is, right, okay, so I now know that um, I can afford it. I now know that this university has got all the right credentials and capabilities that I would like to join. I know where they are. I've got an idea of their location in downtown Canada from the pictures I've seen uh, in Toronto. But also um, to um, know that they're going to get great tutoring. And the last bit is this call to action. So you've got their attention. We need to trigger something that enables them to easily um, follow up on the, their interest and get them to do something, whether that's joining a follow-up webinar, um, downloading a prospectus, or even coming over to um, Toronto to be able to, to see the whites of the eyes of the people who are actually presenting, get a tour of the, um, the campus, etc. But also what they needed to do was to take it a step further and to personalize content according to these international students because obviously and this is what this webinar is about. So this is not rocket science. Within the Sitecore platform as an example, there's a rules-based engine that picks up on the IP address from people who are visiting this site from various countries. And it would say that if they've come from India, then immediately show them straight away um, this content um, on page one. So you've got their attention straight away. And then to serve up content which is on the next click, which is pertinent to people from coming from India, who more than likely on that customer journey will want to know a lot more about the business school and where it's located. We can see from that picture they're getting a view that it's located downtown Toronto, not somewhere out in the boonies. And secondly, they probably want to know because they've looked at the analytics about how to finance it, can they afford it? So that's on there as well. And we can see also what they've been able to do really effectively is just to serve up these pictures is here to do, which correlate to their ethnic um, ethnic origins. So it's starting to have a digital conversation related to those particular individuals. Sounds simple, but it's extremely effective. Um, and the next thing is, is to be able to do it, um, the next thing they did was to be able to do it, from repeat that process from the Middle East. So obviously they're targeting um, students in the Middle East because they tend to be high value students, but also they want to make sure well, that they are um, high-performing students as well because this is a top university and they want to maintain their levels of performance, so that's important, and a bit more about that in a moment. So, you know, the system enables you to say, if this person's come from the Middle East, because we know, just show them this banner as opposed to the home base banner, which, you know, is a generic thing, which is, is, which is of no particular interest to them or minimal interest. And here, the same thing applies to um, attracting students from China, so another target market that they're pursuing. And here you can see on the right the Sitecore rules-based engine, which is very simple, that says because each each picture or um, piece of data within the website is a component. We don't have page-based website, it's a component-based website. So what that means you're able to do is very easily click on using this button up here, this tab up here, is to click on that component and start to personalize it. And so you click on here where you've got this personalization button, if you can see it, two people talking, and then it opens up the rules-based engine. I'm not going to get technical with you because it's really not technical. And then what you can say is create a new condition, and, and you, there's, there's hundreds of conditions within the system that are already out of the box, so you don't have to do any program or development. You're not going into any HTML here whatsoever. They say, right, now what we want to do is to have um, a period of time where we want to recruit people from China. So let's serve up content along the lines that I've just mentioned on that journey from, you know, why, how much, what, who are, the, who are the, the tutors. In this case, it says, right, this rule says, this new condition says where the rule is. If the, the person's IP address comes from China, just show them this picture and you can click up here, actually to pick out what particular picture you want to put on the banner as and when they arrive. Also, when they move through, um, you might say the next thing is that they want more information about facts and fast facts, and, and to do it in Cantonese, because what they realize is that the people who are funding these Chinese students' um, uh, grants um, and for the fees for the, the, um, uh, the university studies were primarily their parents who actually don't speak English, obviously the students do, but their parents don't. And if that's the case, and these are the people that need to be convinced, then the best 
thing to do is to serve them up information in Cantonese. Not pages and pages of it, just you know, four or five bullet points that sums up the things that we've just mentioned. So so far so good. So that you know, they are personalising content. They are engaging with the people based upon their perception owners and their ethnic uh, ethnic origins and the things that they're particularly interested in. So they're having these real-time dynamic conversations, digital conversations, um, and this has bounced up their conversions considerably. So the next thing they've been able to do, and you know, one more example perhaps, and uh, sorry about the granularity of this slide, but, but this becomes really clever. This is how you can start to do personalization and start to attract the most appropriate students, and this is is um, not necessarily an example of recruiting international students, but the same principles apply. Um, so what we're able to do is to personalize content by people who are coming in again from their IP address, and when the IP address may be a commercial operation, in this case the Royal Bank of Canada, and you could do the same thing for international students as well. And if the, we know that they're coming in from the bank, uh, what we then do is to serve on relevant contexts such as this one. By the way, straight to where they get information that says, did you know that um, uh, the dep your deputy vice president is, is on the, um, the advisory board of, of our financial, uh, of our institution? Uh, so this is the kind of things that they're doing which are really working well. And one more example on this, um, and that's about relating to research because obviously um, uh, universities get a tremendous amount of income from research and that's how they get themselves positioned uh, as a prominent player in the world of academia to get that research out there, don't I know it, um, having written a number of papers myself. And so it's a fair assumption, and you can get analytics from this as well, to say that when, when somebody is coming in from a government department, say um, um, the civil service, or whatever it may be, and we know what their um, IP address is, then show them straight away as a teaser, maybe not in the banner, but within the, um, the main content as soon as they land on the website, <clears throat> some research that has something to do with um, their particular area of interest, because what you do, what these universities are doing, as indeed your university will be doing, is doing research that has some value to these communities here. So show them that content about that because that just helps with your brand and relevancy and helps to encourage people to continue to sponsor your research. It works. It's not rocket science. Um, and then you need to be able to do this in an omni-channel way. So again, with Roman University, um, what you're able to do with, with Sitecore, and you should be able to do this with any good digital marketing platform, is you create the content at once. Content could be just these teasers down here. It could be a picture of the university, it could be all the things I've just mentioned, any content or component or piece of news, and it should be able to create that content and then seamlessly publish that out to all these different um, different channels, and whether it may be a mobile, tablet, tablet, tablets are important in the Middle East, of course, and in um, the, uh, and in China, because that's where they principally use tablets more than they do um, desktops and mobile phones as it happens, but what you're able to do is create content and the system's intelligent enough to say, right, let's just render this content which makes sure it's appropriate, the right fit, the right resolution, the right size to be rendered really effectively in LinkedIn here in this case, and they've done that as well. So we're trying to get this omni-channel capability, and I have a, I have a number of great examples in organisations who are not in the world of academia who've kind of nailed this now. Um, and we, we can learn a lot from that. I'm doing a presentation tomorrow about um, how a, um, a baby food company in the Netherlands have nailed omnichannel marketing from vending machines into stations to point to sale to online to mobile and having that ongoing with expectant mothers and mothers in a postnatal situation. It works, it can be done, it's cost effective. So how, how are we going about doing this? What are the techniques that people have started to do? Well, it's again not too difficult. It's just going back to the basics and not being overwhelmed by this because if you've got a small team of people, that's really important. Um, and it boils down to what marketing has always been about, isn't it? It's about context. It's having the right time, the right channel, the right content, and the right students. So it's context marketing. And that goes back to the origins of marketing that came out in the 50s, didn't it? Which was always about product price and promotion. So nothing new there, but what we need to be able to do is exactly that. And more often than not, with brochure website, that doesn't really work that well. So we need to be able to make sure we've got personalization um, that overcomes that 
as an obstacle. So how does it work? Well, you know this, if you're not doing this already, you can do. Um, you build up uh, information about the, um, about the students um, and you get this information as they navigate through your digital properties, whether that's logging on through Facebook or registering online with your website or their ex explicit implied behavior, not explicit behavior, from what they've done, where they've come from, the referring sites, number of visits, page views. So that's kind of ex um, implied information that you've got about them. And then what we can see is more information as they go through their journey, you can collect and harvest information and matching their personas and content to those particular personas, i.e. they're interested in financial services, MBA, uh, and they're Chinese and they need finance. So you're matching content to those particular profiles. And then you can see that you trigger goals that people have to actually pass through this journey, which has some attribution and some value to you as your university, and you can put an economic value to those goals that are triggered as well, which is great for attribution and asking for more money for your marketing investments. And then you've got this explicit information, all this information they've given you that you know um, to be a fact. And you put these together and you end up with a, you're getting back to the single view of the student, which previously was difficult to get because of the intervention of digital. And what we need to do, of course, and hopefully you're starting to do this, I know some universities have struggled, but this is really also making, making sure that we integrate all the offline data with the online data as well to get that single picture of the student. Without it, you can't provide them with the information. And what you end up with is a dashboard like this. So if it's digital, you can track, you can trace, and more importantly, you can measure anything. If it's out there, you can do that. Now, I know there are some issues about integrity and policy on privacy and things like that. But if students have volunteered this information and if they've opted in for, the, for providing this information, I think that the net generation, which students are of, um, don't really do have much of a problem with this. There's a lot of research to substantiate this. So um, a lot of this information is not really getting into any particular personal profile here. But what we can see in this dashboard that Sitecore does is to harvest all this information, the number of visits, campaigns, goals triggered, and so on and so forth, campaigns they've been involved with and automation programs that they've pursued. We can see basic information about where they've, when they last visited the system, what their activity was, they downloaded some content, uh, such as an open day schedule, which is really great because you know you've got some engagement there, you've attracted some interest and you've got some intent. You started to build up a profile, whether that's um, an implied profile, implicit or explicit. And we can see that perhaps probably what we've been able to do in terms of best pattern map is because that's what you build in with the system. You come up with these personas, maybe four or five, two or three to begin with, and you say, right, um, we're attracting international students, so we need to know who they are. So we know what their topic is. It's undergraduate. In this case, it's biosciences. We've got all that information. And again, you can integrate this readily with your CRM systems. You might want to give them a rating. I mean, you can create these dashboards in any which way that you want that relates to the information that you need is meaningful to you and your role. Um, you might show a consolidation dashboard to your uh, vice chancellor, uh, which shows um, an aggregation of all of this information that's coming through. And also, more importantly, we can see what the value of this student might have to your organization, an international student, therefore, being of more value because they pay more, don't they, for their fees. We can also see what they've searched at and what they've registered for. So we know that they've gone through the customer journey and they've registered for an online video tour, which it means you've got, as they've gone through the journey, you've got that high level of engagement, which is really good. And the campaigns are really working and they've been attracted to. So they've signed up for an open day um, or whatever it may be. And then we've got all these stats down here on the right. So this information you know, just happens. The system just harvests, harvests it all, consolidates it all and submits it in a uh, in a great format like this. And what you're able to do once you've got this information is to take it to the next stage and formulate an engagement plan. Um, and this is a very basic one. I excuse the, the bluntness of it or the crudeness of it, but it, it, get, it conveys the point um, as to how you can then, based upon that last card I showed you, then serve up relevant real-time contextual information based upon where they are on that journey, based upon what they're thinking at that time, based upon what device they happen to be using in that moment. And so what we're able to do is to, to map out these journeys 
engineers to see where they've been and where they're likely to go, their propensity, and take miss on the journey where they get through to registering, you know, they're registering. So arguably there's three phases, there's more, but I've just by the way, way of simplicity, I've kept it straightforward here. We're trying to get them aware of what the um, capabilities and credentials of your university and your courses are about. Um, we want them to consider and give them the right relevant contextual information because we know that signing up for an MBA, uh, um, you know, an MSc is a considered decision. It's something that they don't do necessarily in a couple of weeks. Maybe it's a four-month consideration process. And then we need to nurture them and nudge them along this journey and get them to commit um, and give them the information they might need. So they, as they go through this journey, what we're able to do then is pick up information like the first visit, so they, they're coming from a personalized landing page. We don't know who they are yet, but we know where they're coming from. Maybe then we've um, we've got their email address because they've submitted that because there's been an exchange of value and they want to be able to get more information. Um, then as we go through this journey, we're able to actually pick up on the fact that they're interested in a particular um, course, hopefully it's in digital marketing, uh, and, and when. And, and you get the picture and we go through this and then we can see where they are in this uh, evaluation stage and therefore serve up relevant real-time content and get that level of engagement um, as, as where they are in their decision-making process in that journey that they're formulating. And it has to be on the channel, so it's going through, you know, serving up relevant content as I said before, but it's, it's a mixture mobile apps, maybe, you know, you, they get down, they download a mobile app because they're thinking of visiting the campus and you created a mobile app that shows them around the campus and how to find places. So that can be done and if they sign up for that, that has a worth, that shows intent. And then if they're signing up for that, they may have a conversation with people, they may have an online video uh, that they want to actually see more about, speak to other people, they go onto social sites and speak to other students to get validation and, and build up that trust and get that confidence from the students themselves that this is the right thing for them to do and I'm sure you get that picture and it takes them through but then there's a journey that goes on from this isn't there and you can use digital marketing systems to make sure you can improve customer satisfaction to help them you know get the finances to get their accommodation to make sure that they are being able to socialize and join up um, because maybe you know here when we got on this persona with this lady here we happen to find out that her particular hobbies are in rowing. Therefore, you know, we send them information about rowing, and therefore she signs up to the rowing club. I picked that one because my um, my niece has just come from South Africa, and she's joined up at Oxford Brooks University, and she is interested in rowing, and that's really got her excited. One of the reasons why she decided to go to Brooks. So there's a case in hand. Right. Have you got any questions so far? Let me just have a look. Um, uh, yeah. So, so we do have no, one there, Paul. I've got two coming in now. So from your experience, how many times does a student visit an effective website? If the website's effective and it's useful and usable, they would use this as an ongoing communication tool. So it, it could be if they are trying to particularly recruit international students, which we're talking about here today, then it then it could be, you know, it could be 50 times because they're just going back and thinking about it. They're showing other people that information. Um, uh, it's not, it's not a short-term, spontaneous decision, is it? So quite often it's, it's a, a number of times. But you don't have to personalise each and every visit. What you need to do is to make sure that when they do come on, that you know who they are. It says, you know, hi, uh, you've been here before. You've been looking at finances uh, and a finance MBA. Um, and you serve them, so you start to, so they start to feel as though that that digital communication channel knows them, and you're interested in them, and it's not just this faceless uh, brochure side. Um, so it doesn't have. To, if the question is born out of the fact that you can't personalise 50 journeys, you can't, but you don't need to. If you personalise 10 of these things as they go through this journey, which is very easy to do, then you've started a major impact in terms of having that um, experience improving that experience from the student. What was the second question, Tim? So, um, the, there's a follow, well, that's another, another one coming in now, which is great to see, but uh, there's a follow-on one, which I think you may have partly answered, which is, um, some consider too many journeys and clicks as, as a sign that a website needs adjusting. Um, and I guess what what you were saying was, well, it, it, it depends on 
how involved you want to make the, um, the sort of the conversation, the engagement with the with the student, because some need more information. Um, I mean, do you want to do you want to sort of cover off that one? Yeah, I mean, you know, this basic metrics of bounce rate. So if people keep coming back and bouncing out, and it's the same person, then you just know right from the outset that you're not serving up the right information for that particular individual. If they coming back and they're moving through this journey, then you know that despite the number of visits, um, the indication of the frequent, the high volume of visit could be a really good thing. If on the other hand they, they keep bumming out at these particular stages of the, um, the journey and coming back in at different points, and you could easily pick up on that as well because we've got something called the path analyzer that shows you those stats, you can see that actually those journeys aren't converting. Um, and there's a very simple graphical representation of these customer journeys. The green journeys show that people are actually moving through the journey, the, the green bars on the, um, the, um, the path analyzer dashboard that you get. And the red one shows where people are not generating any value and they're bouncing off. So it's very easy to identify which journeys are working and which aren't, and then to optimize those appropriately. And you don't yeah, need well, to, well, well, you don't hold need on to have lots of well, Yeah, maybe yeah, we okay. hold on to that around the demo as well, because yeah. that, that people want to see. So the, the, the next question is, how much extra content do you need to create to be able to have a personalized site for international students over a standard flat website? You know, that's a really great question. Um, in my experience, um, not a lot. In my experience, most, most universities already have more content than they know what to do with. It's there. So you've got the content, it's just a matter of bringing it into um, those sections of the website that need to have the context, the right context. Um, and remember that what the system does is, is to actually render up a picture and make sure it's got the right pixelation, the right size, according to the, the place you're putting it into the, um, the website, the page you're putting it to the website, or whether it's going onto Facebook or LinkedIn. It does all that for you, so you haven't got to fiddle around with that. So putting, creating that content and publishing it anywhere takes the pain away. So I don't think you need a lot of content. I think, you know, and also creating a banner, let's face it, create, just simply creating a banner for China or India or Dubai or whatever it may be, it, it's not a massive amount of work that needs to be done. And if you really want to attract those international students, then it's worth the investment in perhaps refreshing some of that content if need be. But I, I'll just end that question where I started was that in my experience, most universities are not short of content. It's there. They've got a media library somewhere or asset management system somewhere with piles of content. Perfect. Thanks. For Hopefully that, that answers the question. That's the questions tidied up. All right. Well, I'll move on quickly. Um, I know I'm speaking quickly, but we, all, we always want to get through this fairly quickly, don't we? So, um, so let's just talk about different um, personalization because this is what it's all about. Um, and I know I've covered this before on previous webinars, but you know, this is the, if you don't do this, your competitive you just will be doing it, and it's not difficult to do, so get on and do it, make it happen, because you can. I can show you how you can demonstrate the return on investment. I have a calculator, in fact, that, that shows that if you, if you increase personalization between um, just doing basic personalization and, and maybe just personalizing 15 or 20 percent of your content, you will increase conversions between 6 and 12 percent. And a conversion is somebody actually signing up, it's achieving something really significant that has some value to your university. And those numbers have come from research done by people like Gartner and Forrester and you consultancy and other analysts. It's not it's not data I've invented. So um, being an academic, you know, I use and bound to use um, research, aren't I, to substantiate any argument here. So personalization is this rules based uh, personalization, that's one technique, and I've already given you a very simple example but powerful as to how that works. Uh, profiling predictive personalization is you've defined a persona, i.e. Um, student from India who wants to do an MBA, which is really related into the final, final industry, financial industry. So what you're able to do is create a persona, and when that person starts to demonstrate interest in those particular three areas, the, again, using the rules-based engine, what the digital um, system will do, the website will do, is to serve up information based upon that implied behavior as they go through that that visit in that moment personalization. And then systematic personalization is, um, I suppose, it's probably not a very good term for it, but it's, it, it's intimate personalization. It's, it's 
combining, combining the rules and profiling, predictive personalization, and probably you know integrating the, the content you get from your CRM system or log information, so you've got explicit and explicit person, uh, content, which means therefore you can personalize based upon more hard data. That's all it boils down to. There's not, not much more to it than that. So what else are these organizations doing <clears throat> to make it happen? Well, they need to be able to prove to um, the, the uh, you know the people that actually run the universities that um, this does work and, and to explain it in a way that they can understand. And I've often used this and you've probably seen it before. Um, and this is how you actually formulate a digital marketing strategy at the end of the day. So you would start off with understanding where you are in the market and you would do analysis, a pest analysis being political, environmental, social, technical, um, uh, economic or legal, whatever it may be. It doesn't matter what terms you use, a SWOT analysis, understanding who your threats are, who your competitors are, uh, where the opportunities are, where you want to target, who you want to target, etc. And out of that, you will have um, very well published in most cases, some primary you know, corporate objectives or um, university objectives, things that you want to do, such as these. I mean, don't take these literally, they're only there by way of example. And then out of this, you would come up with some digital marketing goals, which are marketing goals, digital is market, digital marketing is marketing, isn't it? So you might say, right, you want to uh, increase revenue from over overseas students. Uh, we want to target the top students, but also the ones who are from overseas um, and other things you might want to do as well. And from that, uh, you then have this uh, digital platform which does all the things I've just mentioned and automates the whole process, so it's really cost effective. Um, so, for instance, if you wanted to attract um, uh, top students from China, what we would do is to define who they are. Um, and define a persona based upon maybe two or three different courses that you might want to promote in particular. Map out a very simple journey. It not, not, doesn't have to be anywhere near as complicated as the even as the one I've shown you. Um, just as basic as the one that Roman University has done. Using the uh, rules-based engine to say that if they meet this profile, show them up this content in that moment. Using the analytics to build up a picture. And remember that folder I showed you, that dashboard, which we call the X file to get that single student view. And then from that, based upon the analytics and information you've harvested, what you're able to do is then to have ongoing that ongoing engagement plans, like the example I gave you, to recruit your students, but then it should move on from that, shouldn't it? You'd be able to give them a great experience once they are enrolled. And you can measure this. You can you can see that somebody's downloaded an app, they've um, uh, attended a webinar, they've gone to an open day, all these things are goals which have a value because the ultimate value is the sign up and the fees that you get. The fact that somebody goes to an open day or downloads an open day app has a value. You can put an economic value to that. Maybe it's, maybe it's only 500 pounds or 200 pounds. You can do that. And then you can simply test it. You know, again, not going into any tech, tech um, not going into the technology, not going to the HTML to do it. And away you go. And, and you can create this content once, as I said, this cope thing, create the content once and publish it anywhere, that's what we mean by that, across all these different channels. and It's automated. The, the, the world of pain is going away from us, I have to say, but you do need to think about the people that you need to be able to manage some of these techniques, and, um, and it's not necessarily recruiting people, it's just saying, oh, I'm going to be really responsible for a project which is personalizing content for these students I want to attract. Um, in a particular uh, um, geography, um, and then we need a little bit of a, oh, the technology we can do this. So a little bit of familiar with how you familiarity that you can do that. But that's a day's course, no more than that. Honestly, I'm not oversimplifying that. So that's how it's a great way of, of getting to to not only crystallise um, what your marketing goals may be if you're prepared to actually um, put your neck on the line and put a number against some of these things, but you can see the correlation between the capabilities of a customer experience platform to how they serve to drive marketing goals to meet overall primary objectives against in which your university is in the market that you're operating in that profile. So that's all good, so we, it works. Um, sorry Paul, we have another question, so uh, maybe we'll just pick yeah, sorry, that up on our, uh, at that point. So um, the question is, how can you tie in the information in a CRM with a person's visit to your website? Yeah, so um, that's, that's a great question, and we always do that. I would always advocate that people tie in that first.
that's what I always advocate you tie in your transactional information and your offline data with your online data. Of course you would do that. So, um, so to get the information I showed you on that, um, that dashboard um, is, is not a too difficult thing to do because what we do have, and any good technology company you now would have connectors that connect to things like Microsoft Dynamics as a CRM system or Salesforce.com. This is something we do all of the time. It has to be done. It's the number one thing that needs to be done. So I know that some universities have some sort of legacy CRM systems where you know the, the, the knitting together and the correlation of data between the CRM system and the um, customer experience platform is a little trickier because it's a legacy, a legacy system, but you can do that. So what you're able to do is define tags and, and um, profiles um, and, and, and the content for a particular student on your CRM system. You can say this person has this um, this code and you would have a code against it. Then and correlate that data, match that data with the digital marketing stuff. So yes, I mean, sometimes it's easy because we've got these connectors with Salesforce and Microsoft Dynamics. Sometimes it's a bit trickier to be able to do that because of the legacy systems that um, some of the universities have in that world. Good yeah, question. Right. Very important and I, to do. And I guess with the worst case scenario with legacy systems is that they will tend to, to always have some kind of export functionality. So worst case scenario is that you have to have a sort of batch um, process which pulls out exportable information and then does some means of tying it together and, and that's either then puts information back into the CRM or, or pulls it into a, um, another location. That is worst case scenario though um, and, and more and more, more technologies have got open APIs. Anything new will have a, an API really that you can call against and that, that certainly should be a number one feature you look for in any technology that you're bringing into um, a new estate is that it, it integrates with others because that is where you get the power from nowadays um, and ecosystems of platforms that tie together well. Um, the legacy systems, they're, they're, a lot of them do provide some kind of integration point and where they don't, they will always do some form of data, data export. Yeah, that question really was for you Tim, wasn't it? That you're the technologist. <laughs> So yeah, that's how it's done, and and, um, and you know you may not do that day one. Maybe it's phase two in the, in the implementation. There's quite often people start and have these si systems operating in a different way, but at some point we know that we can bring them together. And the value of doing that. Good question. Thank you for that question. Any more questions there, Tim? Um, no, we're okay. But um, with any luck, we'll get a couple more because it's good to see them come through. All right. Okay. Well, we're kind of finishing off here, so um, just to summarize um, some of the things that you are doing, and if you are doing this, just these things already, it just validates that you're going about it the right way, I'm sure, and if you're not doing it, this, this is kind of the way that we take it, um, so it doesn't have to be like, wow, this is, this is you know, it sounds fantastic, but it's not for us because I've just got me in digital marketing. It's not the case. We work with companies who've got 10 employees. Uh, where they've made digital essential to the success of their business and um, are able to execute and um, run the technology uh, to be able to perform these tasks. So what we what we normally do with organizations when they're embarking upon this is not to make this onerous or overwhelming. Um, so define a couple of these targeted personas and again, Roman University, this is how they did it. Um, map out the journey, set goals along that journey that you want people to achieve, you want triggers, it's not just about serving up content but we want to measure what that content is and putting a value to those goals as well. You might say that if they had downloaded an app for an open day that's worth more than somebody just um, downloading a prospectus or if somebody's visited the financial page to actually see how much it costs that's worth something but it's not certainly not worth a lot. Um, by comparison to somebody attending an open day or a virtual uh, tour of your university. Then what you need to do is this uh, content relevancy mapping thing, which um, is, is a lot simpler than you might think it to be, but you can see the example with Roman University, what they did was to say what content have we got uh, that we can use to map to these particular journeys, and if not, what, what content do we need to come up with that maps to these particular journeys? And it, it may be only three steps into the journey that you need to personalize content, and that's good enough to start getting conversions. 
and conversions is just moving people through that journey to completion and signing up uh, and enrolling as a student, of course. Um, so just start with a couple of personas and journeys, as I said earlier on. Um, and then following that, thinking out what's the basic nurturing engagement plan, so that, that, that journey so, uh, are based upon those particular personas. And then use the analytics that you've already got um, to, right from the outset at the beginning to see what information you've got, what insight you've got in terms of who's looking at what. Just like the Roman University did when they looked at their Google Analytics, they realized actually it was site call analytics they used, but it doesn't really matter much because you've probably got the information there somewhere to see where people, what people are looking at first in the first two or three visits. You know, that's what you need to do, and then test it. You can do multivariate testing. You have two versions of the same page or two versions of a form. Um, and I know with Roman University, they had a sort of a more information application form. They had a long form and a short form, and they kind of made the assumption that the long form will be um, more successful than people completing it because it gave them the opportunity to tell them more about themselves. Turns out it wasn't, I think, you know, they... The, the increase in sign-ups or the increase in completions of those forms um, was that there was 70% increase in the small form rather than the long form. So they got objective information to say, keep it simple. So nothing new there, and that's all you need to do to really make it start working. Now we've got a quick win workshop that we do quite often with organizations, not just in the education market, but in every sector, um, which is really based upon that slide that I showed you earlier on the build slide, talking about how to align your um, technology and your systems, to your marketing goals is to look at kind of the where you are now. So we've got this maturity model to see where you are in terms of the adoption of digital. Um, that's customer experience review. Um, there's seven stages, and we can see where you are now, where you might want to get to, and how you get there. And that helps you formulate a simple roadmap that can be um, implemented over any given period of time. But this is about quick wins, quick and a win. <laughs> And uh, then setting out strategic objective, right? We want to attract more students in this particular area. How you measure those goals? How many more, how many more students? How many more sign-ups to this, that, and the other? And then quick win tactics, which we well, we're going to personalise this content to these people in China, um, uh, etc. And then the business case will be, well, we expect to recruit X more people as a consequence, or uh, save this amount of money in the execution of this by doing it. And it's great because what we do, I know it sounds very simple, but what we do with universities quite often is bring people in from different functions, maybe people are responsible for PR, people are you know, legal quite often, HR, IT, um, people responsible for enrollment, all those different people, they're not normally coming together to come out of a plan because they all have a, they are stakeholders, they all have a vested interest in this. And the great thing about these little workshops, only the last half a day of that sometimes, is that you get consensus, you can get level setting because you get a common understanding of what you're trying to do here. And when you've got that, you've got everybody behind you. And they're all willing to pay a, a part in it because they get excited. They can see the value is that how it's going to increase um, the performance of their job uh, and also make them more successful. Honestly, um, it, it works. Um, so we're happy to offer you guys um, uh, an opportunity to do a quick win workshop. It's not something we do online. Um, and then this is something I, uh, EduServe are now offering. So, Tim, would you like to explain what that might be? Hi, Tim. Are you there? I am. Anyway, um, it really matters. You just got off mute. Yeah, there's, a, there's a, uh, another question that's come in. So, uh, if the IP address oh. isn't helpful regarding the country of the person it is from, i.e. they're living in a different country to their nation nationality, how do you offer them the option to personalise um, a different country? Yeah, you know, there are, <laughs> there are some anomalies. So, it, 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 you know, you, you personalise, you're getting it right sort of about 80% of the time. Um, so, there's a piece of technology that helps to validate the IP address, and it's a third-party piece of technology, works really well, and, it, and it's accurate a good deal of the time. If you've got people coming in from different locations, but that's not their country of origin, then you've got an anomaly, and what you need to do is to find out a little bit more information about them, and that's an exchange of value. Get them to go onto Facebook, um, offer them something so they're prepared to give you some more information about themselves. So, where there is that exchange of value, they will give that information. But something else will happen further down the line. They will come back, um, 
and you'll be able to compare and contrast these different IP addresses and start to form a picture over a period of time. Really great technical question, um, and you don't always get it right. Um, one of the questions I often get asked in the world of um, in retail is that, okay, so a mother's gone online to buy baby powder, no, not baby powder, gone online to buy um, some toys, um, and so you know it's it's a, a female and it's a mother, and you personalize content based upon that persona. But then what happens is, and she's done it on the tablet, then what happens is the child comes online and um, using the same tablet. So how do you know that it's a child, not a mother? You know, you've got two different behaviors on the same source of data, and that's a tr tricky one. <laughs> but, uh, but the thing is that over a period of time, you build up a picture, let's face it, you know, when people are recruiting or thinking of joining on um, higher education courses more often than not, or even undergraduate courses, it's not something they do um, spontaneously, as I said earlier on. You are able to build up a picture of their um, profile, implicit and explicit, over a period of time. I guess as so well, I what, um, you know. it depends on how much you want to re invest in it. So you, you target the things which you will think will make the biggest difference. And, um, and so it depends with all of these things, doesn't it? It depends on how these anomalies are. If it's a, if it's a real rarity, then you'll probably worry less about um, the being able to fix it, so to speak, than if it was something that, was, that, that happened a lot. So I guess a lot of it's just got to do with context, a lot of it's got to do with always asking yourself what change will make the biggest difference and, and sort of focusing in on that. On that. Yeah, um, you're absolutely right. Excellent. So as we, we are running running short of time now, um, but thanks for, thanks for the questions that have come in. It's, it's always great to have um, uh, a little bit of sort of two-way communication going on, so that's, that's appreciated. Um, so as I said, this was the third in a in a, a run of three, um, which has come to a conclusion now, but, but we think they've been quite successful. Hopefully you found them useful. Um, we have a, a, a fourth uh, webinar. This time it's, it's a bit more practical, a little bit more focused on Sitecore itself, so seeing it in action rather than you know case studies in general about how you might, might engage students. Um, we are running this on uh, Friday the 11th of, of March, so it, it's a little way off, um, but we are, will be sending out invites to everyone who's attended this, uh, this session, and indeed if there's anything you would like to see within the webinar, please do say. So we're going to take a, a cut across um, sort of the different problems that people might face and the, 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 the different technology solutions to that. Um, I'm quite happy to take requests, like your favourite DJ. So um, I don't know. For example, if you have lots of different uh, websites and you want to try and unify that experience, then um, Sitecore offers something called the Federated Experience Manager that can help you drop in personalised content. Um, and also, um, we touched upon the, uh, the pathway analysis. So if you want to see how that pathway analysis can really work, how you can sort of see the drop-off points and the successful parts um, of the user journey, then that's something that we can run through as well. Um, well one last question, but it's, it is around um, the webinar, so that's okay. So yes, um, webinar will be available for download, so it has been recorded, and we'll follow up with an email shortly. So that is it. Thanks again, Paul, and uh, thanks to everyone who's attended and stayed attentive. It's, it's been really good to see uh, such a great and strong turnout. Thanks, guys.